Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is yet another fantastic 49 inch super ultra wide gaming monitor. This is a Philips monitor with some really nice highlights to it. Not only is it QD OLED panel, but it also features Philips Ambiglow lighting, which you can see lighting up the wall behind. And it has some hidden highlights to it that include this smart sniper mode, which enables you to turn on a zoom section of the screen where you can then essentially have a hardware level cheat of sorts so that you can scope in on enemies from a distance in FPS games even when you don't actually have a scope on your gun which is pretty nifty maybe a little bit gimmicky and sometimes quirky because it blocks looting for example but it also is pretty nice and there are some other treats like that to this monitor that I want to get into as we go through as well as showing you a number of different games from various different angles to show you the quality of the screen QD OLED panel delivering 5120 by 1440p resolution, 240 hertz refresh rate, all the usual awesome specs that you'd expect from a monitor like this. I'll leave you the full specs list in the description below. I want to show you my experience with it over the last few weeks, what it's been like to use, and talk about some of how it stacks up against other monitors I've tested. Now, as you can imagine, with the 32 by 9 aspect ratio, you get this really super ultra wide view really soak in the visuals of your game world and just enjoy in a variety of different ways you'll see that you can really see what's going on around you and it gives you a really nice experience in fps games i feel like it gives you a little bit of an advantage because you can see enemies to your left and right you also just have a really vibrant screen with great colors and really good display and a variety of different modes depending on what game you're playing as well now it has Philips Ambiglow technology at the rear, which is sort of like Philips Ambilight, a backlighting technology that beams lighting onto the wall. Now you can change through various different settings for static colors or just different patterns, but you can also set it to react to the audio and video of your games or what's happening on your PC and then light up the wall accordingly. The idea here is to add to the immersion and give you a interesting experience which then adds to your gameplay and lets you soak it in even more. However, I will say it isn't as good as Ambilight. I found it a little bit underwhelming in that instance. The monitor does come with a little remote control, which is fantastic because it makes it easier to navigate through the various different settings on there. And you can see that you can set it to color shift, color wave, breathing, follow video, follow audio. You can also change through the brightness levels. So I put it on the brightest mode and then tried it in a variety of different lighting settings during the day with the curtains open at night with everything shut so it was dark under video lighting and without it. And the experience is kind of mediocre. Now I don't have a perfect setting for this because obviously I've got a blue wall and I've got things on the wall behind it. If you had a white wall you might have a better experience. But I did find when it was really really dark in the room it does certainly glow and you can see it there but it's not as striking as Ambilight televisions. I've got an Ambilight TV TV downstairs which I really love but you can get a better experience with Philips Hue lighting setup and an entertainment area than you can with this and I've done a video on that separately. Now this monitor is obviously good for more than just gaming as well. It's not only a QD OLED panel but it also has 10-bit color and a good representation of the color gamut so it's got a good range across there so it's good for color accuracy and productivity reasons as well. So beyond gaming, I've also been using it for video editing and other things. And you can see using Windows 11 snapping tool, you can easily just snap windows side by side. So you can have multiple windows together and you can be really productive and get lots of things done there. And you can also edit videos and do documents and other things. And I'll get to text a little bit later on. Or you could just snap two windows side by side so you can have a nice big view of video playback here while also editing. I've been doing this, for example, watching Netflix on one side while editing my videos on the right and just playing around with it. Now you have two HDMI inputs and a display port as well as USB-C, but there's also multiple USB ports as well as a KVM switch so you can plug in USB pass-through. What I find interesting is the other thing here is P by P and PIP, which is picture in picture and picture by picture. Plug in DisplayPort and HDMI cable connections, for example, as I've done, and then you can split the monitor into two. So it now becomes 2560 by 1440 on two different panels. And that allows you to do things like this, where you can game at 16 by 9 and then record in it with OBS, for example, or stream to Twitch, which would be the usual format 
of screen size, which most people would watch on. So you could use this for streaming purposes on one side and then productivity or useful things on the other. For example, having Discord open or having Twitch chat open or doing things like I do here where four of my mates are streaming their Tarkov view. So I can see that on the left and clearly see where they are while also seeing my game on the right, meaning there's less chance of team killing your friends by accident. So you can see there's multiple different use cases for how you'd use the monitor, whether it's going full 32 by nine, having that full immersive view or splitting it into two either from the same PC or from different sources, because obviously with picture by picture, you could have a console on one side and a PC on the other. The problem I found is that sometimes when you turn your PC back on, it then duplicates the display instead of splitting it. So I then have to use the remote control to tell it, no, I want HDMI one on one side and display port on the other. A little bit finicky and fiddly and not something I've experienced with other monitors which offer a similar thing. So a minor frustration there. In Windows settings, you'll see that the monitor split like this is obviously set as two different ones, but 2560 by 1440p resolution. Under the advanced display settings, you'll see you have the two displays basically named the same, but you'll notice that on one, we've got 200 Hertz refresh rate, and on the other one, we only have 143.91. Now, logically, it's a 240 Hertz refresh rate panel maximum. So really, it shouldn't be 201 and 140 on the other. It's a bit of an illogical setup there that can't quite be right. It should be 120 Hertz on either. So I think that's just a finicky of the system and what cable you're using. In the box, you obviously get the monitor stand, a few different cables as well. So you can see I've got an 8K HDMI cable and then a DisplayPort cable too and then a USB cable. And as I said, you've also got pass-through potential here, so you can do USB cable connection from your PC to it and then plug things directly into the monitor. The stand is quite compact, as you can see it here alongside a headset. The base for it is pretty hefty and bulky. And you also have included a vase mount as well. So if you want to, you could potentially look at getting a wall mount for it so you can set it up on your wall instead. So you do have options in how you set that up. Obviously, that's not something I've been able to test to see how this works or how good it would be. But I'd imagine getting it close to the wall would improve the Ambiglow technology and maybe make that a little bit nicer. So that's something to consider, perhaps, and another nice option of the monitor. Now, the stand, I will say, though, is not great in terms of height adjustment. This is actually at its maximum height. And what I found was that it wasn't quite tall enough for me. So I felt like it was sitting a little bit low. Maybe you end up looking down. Obviously this is gonna depend on your desk setup, your chair setup and your overall height. But I thought it was a shame that it wasn't very height adjustable. Really it's sitting a little bit too low for me. You can adjust it side to side quite easy. So it will turn side to side and you can tilt it up and down and you can obviously move it down further, but you can't really move it up, which is a shame. So the height is fairly limited there. So if that's something you're concerned about, then that's worth bearing in mind. However, my overall experience with it has been great. As you've seen from a number of these shots, the gameplay looks magnificent. There's loads of different quality settings in here that you can change between. I mentioned it's got 10-bit color. We also have HDR, which I'll show you in a little while. The response rate on it is really smooth. It does have adaptive sync in it, so it has AMD's free sync technology. I, however, found that having that on resulted in some flicker, which unfortunately I've not managed to capture on camera, but it resulted in some flicker in some games, and it wasn't a great experience. I actually found it was better to turn that off and not use adaptive sync. So that's one downside to it. It's G-Sync compatible, but it's not G-Sync technology. It's free sync. So it was just a little bit finicky with my 4090 and it didn't work great there in that department. But the overall experience from it is thoroughly immersive. You're seeing a lot of gory gameplay, obviously. Apologies if that's shocking. But the other thing that's really nice is the HDR settings on it. So usually I don't rate HDR settings on monitors. I find them to be a little bit hit and miss. Depending on the games you're playing, it can result in it looking really washed out. But with this one, I wanted to try Cyberpunk 2077 and see how we got on with that. This has HDR settings which require a little bit of fiddling, so they're not immediately obvious. First of all, you need to go into your Windows settings and you need to turn on HDR from there. So search for HDR settings in Windows, turn it on. Then once you've done that, you will then find that the monitor changes a little bit and goes washed out. And then in the monitor settings via the remote, you'll find a new menu appears that wasn't there before, HDR Smart Image, and then you can choose between game, movie, vivid, true black, and personal settings. 
and change how the game looks from there. And then you can tweak HDR settings in the game as well. So there's three different ways you need to turn on and tweak HDR settings. What I found was though, it made Cyberpunk look even better than it normally does and gave an even better range of visuals to it, which was really pleasing. Now I want to say that my overall OLED experience with this monitor hasn't been as good as other monitors that have tested OLED panels. Even another Philips monitor, which I'll show you in a little while, which I actually preferred, did a better quality and blew me away from the OLED. And I can't put my finger on why, because it's certainly vibrant and it certainly looks good. I had no problems with dead pixels, no issues with any blurriness. It's really clear, it's a really nice looking panel, but it just wasn't as good as the other Philips monitor that I've tested, and I can't really suss out why. However, that's not to say it's bad. As you can hear, there is another highlight to this monitor is the speakers, which are insanely loud. Actually really good sound out of these monitor speakers. I was really surprised by that because usually with other ultra wise, you don't really get speakers built into them. My Samsung Odyssey monitor, for example, doesn't even have it. Now a bit more about those sort of hidden features that we talked about earlier on. You can see the smart sniper scope thing on here. There is a downside to that that I discovered is that it gets in the way a little bit. So you can have it in the middle of the screen, you can have it at the top. Here when I was trying to loot in Tarkov, I couldn't see inside the boxes. So I find you have to turn it on and off, which you have to do from the remote, which is then a little bit fiddly. There's also another setting under here, which you can see is stark shadow boost. What this does is it lights up dark areas. Now this is really handy for Tarkov because you can see this little hut, for example, went from basically not being able to see in it to a much brighter setting. This is a smarter technology than just churning up your gamma and it seems to work really well. The downside is it doesn't work if you do split screen mode. So if you put it in the two settings with P by P, for example, now that doesn't work anymore. The other thing that doesn't work then is Ambiglow. You can't put Ambiglow on to respond to the screen when you've got two screens input. You can turn it on still and have it like a default color or a static color backlighting, but you can't use it in that way. So if you're using the split screen mode, you can't use the sniper mode, the stark boost or Ambiglow. So really for the best experience, you want that full 32 by nine setup. I'm gonna put it into that mode and then just use the monitor like that for gaming. And then you'll be able to take advantage of those other little settings that you can play around with in there. And I must say, I really do like how this monitor performs. You've seen loads of different games in here and how they look, it looks great. The one downside I have found though, is the curve on it is just a bit too flat. It's not as curved as other monitors. So I just found like, especially in productivity uses, I was turning my head a lot more than with other similar monitors I've tried, which is a weird problem to have. But in 32 by nine aspect ratio, it just gives you a really immersive view on your side. So you don't really need to turn your head because you've got the peripheral vision, which immerses you in the games. OLED panel, you might be worried about burn in. This monitor has a pixel refresh setting on it, so you can refresh the pixels every so often, and it'll keep warning you about it, which can get quite annoying, but it's good to know that there's some help there. It also has a three-year warranty on the panel as well to reassure you about burn-in too. And I certainly didn't notice any problems. I did regularly run with static images on the same screen for a long time, and I often ignored the pixel refresh warning because it'd be happening when I was in the middle of playing a game, for example, and I haven't seen any issues to warrant being concerned about it. The other thing to bear in mind, obviously, is it's 32 by nine. If you go full screen with a video, like a YouTube video, for example, you'll see black bars on either side. That's an issue with all 32 by nine monitors, but it's worth pointing out. Now, text is another thing that OLED monitors are known for being a bit hit and miss with. I didn't actually find this to be a problem, but I want to show you some of the settings that you can do in here. Bear in mind, this is captured on camera and I've not done a great job of it because it looks better in person than it does on this video. But what you'll see is there's very different modes as well as the FPS racing modes and other things. You've got low blue mode and also other sort of eye care settings further into the menu, which you can cycle through. So I found that actually tweaking through these, for example, makes the text look even better. You'll notice that one of the modes actually makes the screen go black and white, and that's easy read settings, which just turns everything black and white. Then you've got economy modes, which does similar. In these modes, text is easier to look at. It has sharper edges, it looks as it should do on other panels. So if you're concerned about that sort of thing, then there are modes that you can change between when you're not in the gaming modes, 
which just makes those things look a lot nicer. But I certainly didn't see any issues that would put me off of using it if I was using text a lot. And that was my heavily day-to-day -day sort of work on it. I wouldn't find any problems there. I certainly didn't see any issues with what I was doing with note-taking and other things. But gaming is obviously the main aim of the game here. And this panel looks the business. It sounds great. It looks great in various different games. Got a really fast refresh rate on it. The downsides, obviously, is that adaptive sync not working smoothly, for example. But high refresh rate, good response rate on it as well. Nice smooth action across the board. Great gameplay in a variety of different games too. And loads and loads of boxes ticked in my mind. Decent for the price. You're getting a lot for your money including some of those nice hidden features, which might be gimmicks for some. I quite like that smart sniper one, for example, although it is a little bit fiddly to turn on and off. However, as I said, Philips' other monitor, which I'll link to in the description below, which I did a video on that isn't 32 by 9 the OLED panel on that was a lot more impressive. So if OLED is what you're after, then that was a much nicer one. I also found that comparing it to my Odyssey G9, the curve on that is a lot stronger, which means that you turn your head less. And it's hard to do this justice on a video, but what I found is that weirdly, the curve is better on my standard monster than it is on this Philips one. And that just means that it, it feels a bit more immersive and less that you actually have to move around more, which is a strange complaint to have. However, I will say that based on my experience, I still would consider purchasing this. Would I swap my standard monitor for it? Possibly not even though that's not early D. But that said, I really like it for the reasons I've listed. And if you're interested, then I would say it is worth considering. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Find out more in the description down below. And thanks very much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or what you think of this monitor. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.